watching Amazons. I'm now off to my emergency medical technician class. I'm taking the 51A bus instead of a BART train because I want to throw myself on the third rail whenever the train enters the downtown Oakland station. The bus's windows will not stop rattling. I sit in the isolation of thought. I work as a houseboy, doing dishes mornings and nights, but I am unable to meaningfully communicate with the 50 sorority girls I live with. They're smart. They go to UC Berkeley, but I can't seem to connect with them. I don't know if it's because I'm male and I buy my clothes at the Salvation Army, or that I'm an English major or what. Just the other day, the dinner conversation for the whole house centered on what brand of handbag was in fashion and scented tampons. They talk about blowjob techniques and everything taboo except for the real problems they face. During the EMT lecture, my hands are stiff from my houseboy duties. Yesterday, I had nine hours of English class at the junior college. Lately, I tend to stare at walls and windows as if they hold the meaning of my existence. The only thing that keeps me on edge is that tonight, I will see Emma at her sharpest. In EMT class, I imagine Jesus Christ lying, fallen off his cross. I approach to determine Jesus' level of consciousness by pinching his ear. Jesus is unresponsive. I administer two rescue breaths and initiate CPR. The first of my three uh, hand lunges into Christ's chest crack like sheets of ice falling from rooftops. Jesus' ribs, though tenuous, prove to be sinewy in my later droppings of his chest. With each thrust, purple blood comes from Jesus' palms and feet. Intestines slightly eviscerate from his lateral abdominal wound. Come on now, Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus Christ, I pant with increased vigor when pushing down. I lick Jesus' stale lip area to better seal the connection to administer breaths. I continue to repeat the 15 and 2 CPR process without emotion or full consciousness. My mind pulses with vacancy. I long to stop and cry and hug Jesus. Hug Jesus. His face is now radiant like Emma's. I continue. My hands are now sweaty. My back muscles are stiff with lactic acid. My hands are now one with Jesus' serene, dirty chest. I bend for another blow kiss. The instructor calls on me. Late that night at the sorority, I imagine that my bathroom mirror is infused with the image of Stephen Dedalus. My temples ache and my limbs hang knotted in length. Looking out my window, I see Emma's light turn off across the sorority quad. I am instantly invigorated with my bloodlust for the Prada-wearing blonde. It is time. I walk over to the storage closets and hide behind the sliding mirrors in front of the large first floor powder room. I keep the sliding doors open two inches and see the back of her body as she walks in. My eyes adjust to the light and I see the reflection of her, of her front in the sink mirror opposite to me. I still myself. She turns on the water and steam clouds the mirror. She holds her arms below the steaming water. She removes a thin object from her pocket and runs it under the water. Her body tenses as she moves her right hand over her left arm. I'm gripped by the pockets of air, of air released from this girl who fastidiously cuts her arm with a wet razor blade. My hip bones uncomfortably rub each other. My feet are now pulsating. They are uncomfortably hot with an overabundance of blood. I cannot slide my feet. She will hear me. She now quickens her breaths. I could smell her body if it weren't for the cleaning agents in the closet. I see blood drip onto the tile floor. She tilts her head back orgasmically, mouth open. She looks back down, runs her arm and the blade through the water, and then shuts off the water. She continues deftly sliding the blade back and forth over her left arm. Her uncontrolled, shallow respirations are screaming at me. My foot slides. Silence. I am screaming without sound. She knows I'm here. She has to. My hand is down my pants. She paradoxically remains still while shivering and held cries. I wish to be her Pablo Neruda whispering, I want to do with you what spring does with the cherry trees. I wish to be her Oscar Wilde declaring, the well-bred contradict other people, the wise contradict themselves, and then go on to contradict other people. 
I wish to be the man who violently makes love to this woman whose beauty is effortless, but I'm not violently making love to her. Instead, I just watch and listen as such beauty cut herself away, unable to control her control. I just watch such beauty cut and destroy herself, unable to approach her, and I live another day, each day, to watch. <laughs>